Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris here. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to move the text field either away from or towards the keyboard so that it stays right above the keyboard and you can see exactly what you're typing. So the idea for this video actually came about one of the lessons inside my course pertaining to the text field and I was just showing students how to animate the text field out of the view of the keyboard in case the text field is hidden. So in this demo right here I have the text field here and it's closer to the bottom of the screen and I can show you exactly what's happening. If I tap on this uh, text field it's going to animate up along with the keyboard sliding up so that it stays um, it stays in view and not hidden by the keyboard like that. So the way we achieve this is really through the use of this bottom constraint right here which tells us the distance between the bottom of the view and the bottom of the text field. Right now it's set to be about 20 and what I've done is I've exposed this constraint as an IB outlet property for the view controller here. So there's my bottom constraint exposed as an IB outlet. And then in the view to load, what I have is I've added an observer to listen for the UI keyboard will show notification, which will fire whenever the keyboard shows. And I've set it so that it calls a function that I've created whenever this notification occurs. So the function is down here. Whenever the keyboard shows, what I do is I grab the info along with that notification um, and it contains some details like how tall the keyboard is going to reach basically the height of the keyboard and I need that information because I need to animate that bottom constraint so that the height um, so that it clears the height of the keyboard plus a little bit of a gap and essentially what I'm doing is I'm animating the new value for that bottom constraint um, and setting it to a value that is just above the keyboard height. So that's how that effect is achieved. So back to uh, the question that I got in the course, Toby asks, this sample works because there's a vertical bottom constraint on the text field. However, when we're laying things out in a stack view, how are we supposed to achieve the same effect? Now that's a great question because these days we really take advantage of how easy it is to create layouts with stack views. And if you're not aware of them, uh, stack views, basically you can put elements inside of it. It groups them together, either in a vertical fashion or a horizontal fashion. But you don't have to specify auto layout constraints for the elements inside the stack view. The stack view handles that layout for you. All you need to do is position the stack view. This is a great question and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it with a text field inside a stack view. Oh, and before I forget, if you actually want the code for the Exco project that I just showed you, check in the description for the link to download that. All right, so back to this example here. This text field right here is inside a stack view. In fact, it's inside two stack views and I'm animating it so that it sits above the keyboard just fine. So let me show you um, exactly how that's done. This project here is part of a project that we're working on inside the course. It's a survey app and it's not complete yet so you don't see any styling but it serves the purpose for me to use as a demo to uh, demonstrate how this works. Okay so here is our text field right here. Actually, this is the text field right here. And as you can see in this document outline, both this text field and this label, this name label, is sitting inside this stack view. And furthermore, this stack view, along with two other stack views, are inside an outer stack view like that. And it's this outer stack view that has this top constraint right here. And that's really going to be the key of this because you can't really animate any sort of constraints because this stack view organizes how these two elements are laid out and this stack view organizes how you know its elements inside of it are laid out. All you really have to work with, you have to go way, way kind of up the layers of the stack views until you reach that outer stack view which is positioned by auto layout constraints. And then you can grab one of the constraints and you can animate it. 
Now, you know, it's, it's obvious what we're going to do here. When the keyboard slides up, we're going to um, increase the constant for this constraint so that it pushes the whole outer stack view down so that this text field sits right above the keyboard, right? But the real question is how do we know how far to push it down? Or, you know, if the text field is down here, how do we know how far to, you know, change this constant so that that text field is always just sitting right above the keyboard? Well, it requires a little bit of math. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that math right now. But first, um, what's important is that you're going to need an IB outlet for the actual text field um, for its containing stack view and then um, all of the stack views above it until you reach the outer stack view which has the constraint and furthermore you need an IB outlet for this constraint as well so just to remind you here's the text field here's the stack view that contains it and then here's the outer stack view so in first view controller if I scroll all the way to the top I've got IB outlets for all of those things. So here is name text field. That's an IB outlet for the actual text field that we're working on. Um, this text field stack view is an outlet for that stack view. And then here's the outer stack view. And finally, here's another outlet for that top constraint for that outer stack view. I've called it outer stack view top constraint. And I've also created another variable here um, just to keep track of what the original value for this constraint was uh, because we want to animate it back to that value after the keyboard gets dismissed. Okay, so now that we have all of these things, it's going to be the same technique to detect the keyboard. Uh, we're listening for the UI keyboard will show notification and when that happens, we call this function which I created here, keyboard will show, and that function is down here. Again, we grab the user info from the notification in order to get the height of the keyboard. So here's the basic premise. First of all, we want to find our target Y coordinate. So basically, where do we want our text field to sit? Then we find out exactly where the text field is sitting, you know, because it's kind of buried deep in, in a couple of stack views. So we need to calculate uh, where the text field is sitting in terms of the Y coordinate. Then we find out how off are we from the target. So we calculate this difference and then we can either add or subtract that difference from the top uh, constraint constant. Now that we have the target offset we need in order to uh, correct things or I mean place the text field above the keyboard, we can then animate that constraint towards that target offset. And that's how we're going to achieve that effect. So I'm going to use some diagrams to show you guys exactly how these calculations were done, just to help you understand um, why, why I'm subtracting or adding all of these bunch of things. Okay, so let's start with finding our target Y. As you can see with the slide, we start with the height of the view. Then we subtract the height of the keyboard. Then we subtract 20, which is just an arbitrary number for a gap between the text field and the keyboard. And then finally, we subtract the height of the text field itself. And the reason we have to subtract the height of the text field is because when you ask the text field where its Y coordinate is, it tells you based off the upper left hand corner of the text field. Furthermore, we are going to be adjusting the top constraint for the stack view. So essentially, we're calculating a target based off of uh, the gap between the top of the view to the top of the text field. And that's our target Y. Now jumping back to the Xcode project, the next thing to find is the Y coordinate for the text field. Exactly where is the text field sitting currently? And this is a pretty straightforward calculation. Again, back to the diagrams, we take the Y coordinate of the outer stack view and we add the Y coordinate for the text field stack view and we add that to the Y coordinate of the name text field and that's going to give us the total distance that the text field is from the top of the view. In the next slide we basically calculate the difference. We take our target Y and then we subtract 
the current Y value of the text field. This calculates how far off we are from our desired location. Now that we have the offset, all we need to do is add it to that top constraint to increase how large that gap is and thereby pushing that text view to our desired Y location. So jumping back to Xcode, you can see that's exactly what we're doing. We're finding the difference between the target Y and the text field Y. And then we're taking, uh, well, we're creating a constant here that is basically taking the current value of the top constraint uh, plus the difference. And that is the new constant we want to set the top constraint to. So next we create an animation and we're setting this top constraint, the constant, to our new um, offset. And this target offset is combining the current top constraint constant plus the difference we need to push it to the desired Y location. In terms of animating the text field back into its original position, well, that's easy. Here, all we need to do is create an animation that sets the top constraint back to its original constraint value, which uh, this variable here I created up here, and it's just 20. Now, I hope that made sense, and remember to check the description below the video for the links to download these Xcode projects. So if you enjoyed this lesson and you want to see more, please subscribe and please hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.